Hello Internet, this is Kala. Welcome to a new series. This is Exploring the ASCII Dungeon, where we will be, well, exploring the dungeon entirely in non-tile, non-pixel art, non-graphic, basically, interfaces. So, the point of this series is to provide points of comparison of various roguelikes uh, in terms entirely of their implementation of using text characters to represent the dungeon. So instead of looking at tiles and graphics, we're going to be looking entirely at how different roguelikes uh, use color and font and things of that nature to represent the environment around the player. So to start us off, uh, we're going to be playing Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup in ASCII. This is mostly because I really love Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup and I will always find an excuse to play it when given the chance, but it's also a very useful, fairly traditional game that uses a lot of the conventions of ASCII implementation in modern day roguelikes, which will be important to see which games use those conventions and which games subvert those conventions as we go along. So, um, to start, this is the intro screen as we would see it firing up crawl for the first time. Uh, just install crawl to default directory. Um, and double click the crawl console icon in Windows 7. Now, one thing is, is that basically crawl has just opened up the Windows command line for us and um, is displaying this screen. This is the very traditional way that roguelikes work, is that you're running them technically from the command line and that's one of the reasons that ASCII implementation happened, I guess you could say, and has become popular. One caveat to this is that while this is completely clear on my screen right now at 1280 by 1024 pixels, if you are watching this not in HD on YouTube, it probably is not the clearest to you right now. This has to do entirely with how YouTube implements, well, both YouTube and my screen recorder and screen renderer fraps and vi virtual dub uh, render the images that I'm trying to give you. So my solution to this is that we're actually going to be changing the default. The colors will still be identical but the font will not be this. There will be games in the future that do force this font and there are going to be games in the future that force other fonts which are all interesting choices and all things we need to consider when playing these games. The way you do this in on Windows 7 is you right click on the title bar and there's a line here called properties. Um, the default is raster fonts in 8 by 12. I'm going to change to Consola size 28 and now things should be much easier for you to read. Maybe not perfect but much easier for you even if you are not uh, watching in HD just because of how YouTube and my recording is recompressing everything. So, now that we have that out of the way, uh, let's get started with the actual implementation and things we notice. First of all, um, the standard seems to be black background, light colored text. Uh, and there are exceptions to that. Uh, we are already using four colors here. White, light gray, yellow, and a gold brown type of color. Um, we are also already using a background other than black, in this case light gray, to represent which of the choices is the default, uh, is the default, is not the default, is the choice that we are picking right now. So um, right now to just play Dungeon Crawl Standard it is um, the name Dungeon Crawl is in black text with a gray background. If I just decide instead to play Hints Mode, then we have suddenly have that line as 
gray background and so on. So we're already using alternate backgrounds as a way to highlight particular things on the screen as opposed to say having the correct cho the current choice be a different color. Um, so that's one decision that Crawl has already made that will be different from decisions other games make. Let's keep going and make a character. I'm going to be playing Spriggan Enchanters. If you watch my other Crawl Let's Plays, you know why I play Spriggan Enchanters. As I said, we're not focusing too much on gameplay for this particular video, but uh, as long as this video goes well, I will probably continue this Crawl run in later videos on its own. But let's not worry about that right now. We've already introduced another color, that is bright green, to see our current choice of species. And right now, any choice is bright green. Any of these are equally valid options, is what the game is trying to say. Like so. Um, so let's pick the Spriggan. Now suddenly, we have two kinds of options. Instead of before, where every single species was in light gray and choosing any of them gave a green background, now we have both light gray and dark gray options. This is something Crawl calls good care and bad care. Basically where um, some species background combos are more ideal than others. For example, Spriggans are not very good at fire magic, so you would have a harder time being a fire elementalist than you would as a necromancer or as an enchanter. Um, and this, uh, this distinction is a push towards the, re towards the player to choose certain, um, certain combinations over others. Every combination is technically valid in Crawl, but some are going to be easier than others, and this is one of the ways that Crawl sets its difficulty level. So if I try to make a Spriggan Fire Elementalist, for example, now instead of that pleasant green background, I suddenly have this bright yellow background, a warning. This is not ideal. If you think you can handle it, we're not going to stop you. But this is not ideal. I'm going to be playing Spring and Enchanters though. As I said, watch my other crawl videos to find out why. Uh, long story short, they're really good newbie characters and they're stealthy and I like them quite a bit. Anyway, let's get started with the game. So we have three of the very basic things you need to know if somehow you have played roguelikes without playing ASCII before. The at sign represents the player character. The hash marks represent walls, and the dots represent floor tiles that are valid moving spaces. Um, these particular walls are brown to represent that they are rock walls. Different types of walls will be different colors. Uh, the at sign is... And these three, I would say, the hash marks, the dots, and the at sign are really characteristic of how roguelikes are thought to look in ASCII. Uh, the at sign is in fact so common that pretty much wherever you see an at sign in, in a video game context outside of say Twitter handles, it probably means that there's something roguelike happening. Um, at play using an at sign was a famous uh, rock paper shotgun um, column about roguelikes. Uh, there's an at sign in the logos for the Temple of the Roguelike, Rogue Basin, and Roguelike Radio. And even my avatar on YouTube and Twitter and Tumblr is an at sign. All very deliberate, all to show this is what a generic human looks like. I want you to know nothing about me other than the fact that I am a, the hero of my own story. And so I'm going to be represented by a generic at sign on a back ba black background. Anyway, um, other things that Crawl is doing here, we have a whole UI here. We have a message buffer, six lines long. We have health and magic and the semi-graphical representations of health and magic uh, points in terms of these bars currently represented with equal signs because they're full. Um, and all sorts of stats. Armor, evasion, shield, strength, intelligence, dexterity. 
what level we are, how much experience we have towards our next level, where we are in the dungeon, how many turns we've used, how much gold we have, what weapon we're using, what ammunition we have on hand. Whew! That's a lot of stuff. Um, other games will show more or less at any given time, uh, which I guess is a interesting distinction. We also are already using a lot of colors here. Green and blue for the health and magic bars, a cyan color to highlight certain messages on the message buffer, in this case telling us what kind of uh, commands we can enter into the into the game. Yellow to represent uh, just gen generic help messages in this case, but yellow will be used for other things. Crawl is not a limited palette game in the slightest, and that is a deliberate decision as well, which we will be seeing plenty of contrast with for other parts of the game. So let's keep moving. Uh, another thing that we've already seen, some of these walls have turned turned gray. That means that I know they exist, but I don't but I cannot see them right now as opposed to the brown walls that I currently can see, which would be other colors if they were something other than rock walls. We have this open parenthesis to represent darts um, or any kind of ammunition, actually. Uh, different colors would represent different kinds of ammunition, so arrows are a different color than crossbow bolts, which are different from needles used in blowguns, which are different from darts. In general, what we're going to be seeing a lot of is that different characters represent different classes of items or monsters. So for example, all of the hounds are lowercase h's, or all of the uh, scrolls or question marks, or all of the potions are, are exclamation points, and different colors will represent different types within those uh, categories. So. Cyan versus blue versus gray versus white versus brown. Uh, open parentheses will be different kinds of ammunition. Another thing we have here is in another completely classic. Very few of any games mess with this concept of the less than sign being representative of staircases up. In this particular case, they're blue because they are staircases out of the dungeon entirely to end the game. Um, different ones will be different colors, and we'll get back to that in just a second. Let's keep exploring. Our first monster, G, so goblin types. Brown tells me it's a hobgoblin as opposed to another kind of, of monster. Blue background instead of black background to represent that it is sleeping and thus not available, and thus um, is not aware of us, and if we happen to be next to it while it is sleeping, we will get a massive stabbing bonus, which is great for us as an enchanter, uh, if we can get close to it without waking it up. This open bracket represents armor. It is a buckler, uh, which is a kind of shield. We will get that in just a second. And another classic, a dollar sign representing money. In our case, is nine gold pieces. Um, this percentile sign represents uh, food, in our case a meat ration, which we can't eat because spriggans are actually herb herbivores. Oh well. Okay, that hobgoblin woke up and we saw that its background color changed. That B represents a bat, um, gray just for the standard bat, again different kinds of bats will be different colors. Um, we already have many colors in the message buffer. Um, for example, the the red messages for when hostile animal um, hostile monsters come into view. Let's see if we can kill them. Miss messages in a darker color than hit messages. Um, messages that an, a monster is severely wounded in bright red. Again, lots of color and crawl. There's not a limited palette here in the slightest which is something a lot of people hate, which is something a lot of people might love for its high contrast. It's, you know, just a design choice and a conscious one, and that's something I want to stress throughout throughout playing this game. Anyway, let's let's kill things. Okay, that bat flew away. Come on. Please die. There we go. 
dark red to represent a kill. Um, corpses are also represented with percentage marks uh, because for most characters they are also a source of food. Not for us because we're Spriggans, but for a lot of others, yes. Um, we already saw my health bar go down and up. There were uh, gray dashes here to represent um, health I had lost a while ago. Uh, red dashes to represent health I had just lost. And dark green equal signs for health I have just regained. So, uh, an interesting way to represent uh, recent versus later events. I want that buckler. I want to wear that buckler. Um, I also want to turn off skills. Ah, yeah, this screen. One of my only gripes with Crawl is that for all of the colors it uses, there's some things it doesn't actually use color difference on. One of them is the screen. Yes, dark gray skills are skills that I currently do not have versus light gray skills, which are skills that I do. Um, we're, we're always told training levels in percentages and aptitudes in red. I wish instead of all of the aptitudes being red, they were, say, dark red for uh, skills that I'm terrible at to bright yellow for skills that I'm great at with orange in the middle for skills at plus zero. It'd be an interesting way to represent at a glance what a, what a particular species is good at or bad at. But beggars can't be choosers. Um, and I would be interested to see that actually implemented in later forms of crawl, but it seems that the crawl UI team is mostly focused on making the graphics implementation better as opposed to changing anything in ASCII. Oh well, who knows. Anyway, let's uh, turn off everything but stabbing because that's just good practice. I want to focus on oh, single skills instead of trying to train many at a time. It just makes things easier in crawl. Um, ah, here's something. We suddenly have a differently colored background on this, on this square. That means there's more than one item on that particular tile. So in our case, it is both the club and the corpse of that project of what we've just killed. There's an amulet, which is the um, quotation mark over here. It is black because the it is dark gray because the um, the unidentified description is black, and you wouldn't be able to see black on a black background, which is kind of ingenious, I, I have to admit. But uh, yeah, I'll pick that up. Uh, another color on the message buffer, br uh, dark green to represent skill increases. It'll also be dark green for level increases. Uh, this cobalt corpse is highlighted in bright green, which represents that even if I was able to eat cobalt corpses, it probably would poison me. Eh, can't win them all. Let's keep moving. Here is a newt. It is sleeping. It is now not sleeping. Uh, this question mark represents a scroll. All of the question marks in crawl are the same colored scrolls, probably because scrolls wouldn't have visual cues at a glance like potions or or jewelry would. That's okay. Um, these eights represent statues. Let me put on that that amulet. Not sure what it does. One way to find out. Um, and keep moving. Uh, this cockroach's background is yellow. It is not asleep like the blue backgrounds we were seeing before, but it's also not aware of us like the black backgrounds. So it's something in between. It's just a useful shorthand. Uh, and now it, it recognizes us and wants to kill us. Nothing out of the ordinary. Um, that, that exclamation point was a potion, as I've mentioned before. And uh, more scrolls. But yes, Crawl is definitely a game of lots of colors used at once, lots of colors used to indicate status. Uh, 
and less about the aesthetic than a lot of other games. Anyway, we've reached level two. Uh -huh, lots of memorize and sorcelled hibernation, which will. If, in case you don't know about crawl, and sorcelled hibernation is a skill that makes monsters fall asleep if they fall for it, like that, which is great for stabbing things. Um, that red dot means that there's blood on the floor. Nice touch. Uh, dart trap. So the carrot represents the trap itself, and there are darts also on that tile, which is why, once again, we have a different colored background. Different uh, types of traps would be different colors instead of the cyan for the dart traps. Can I disarm it? Uh. There we go. Um, let me turn off training ice magic. Once again, here are all those darts. More scrolls. Fantastic news. Potions. Let's read one of these scrolls just to see. Scroll of identify. Potion of might. Blink next to it. Rest up. Uh, this. Uh, greater than sign represents the staircase leading downwards. It is white because it is a stone staircase, which means in Crawl's case that if I go down these staircases, I can come back the way I came. There are also escape chutes, which are represented in brown, which if I go down them, I can't go back up the way I came, or vice versa. Um, these happen... Crawl also has an interesting system where there are almost guar guaranteed, I believe, to be three staircases on every level of the main dungeon. And if you have already gone down a staircase, down a staircase, it will be represented in green. If you have already gone up a staircase, it'll be represented in red instead of the usual white on both sides, which is a nice l little trick, especially for the view the entire dungeon mode of of the map where here at the very top at a glance I can see how many stairs up I can see and how many stairs down I can see. Pretty handy. Um, let's keep exploring. Here's some arrows. So here's a good chance to... There we go. So these cyan um, open parentheses represent darts, and these blue open parentheses represent arrows, as we've talked about before. Here's another staircase down. Let's keep exploring, see if we run into anything else interesting along the way. Ah, and these brown ones represent sling bullets. Again, as we said, different types of items within a class are represented by different colors of the same character. So, a useful shorthand. Okay, I know I see ammunition, I'm not sure what type it is, or I've semi-memorized what kinds of, what colors of ammunition I'm looking for. In my case, I'm mostly looking for poison needles for this character. So maybe some interesting darts, but that's about it. If I was a centaur ranger, my priorities would be very different. Uh, more dart traps. Lots of dart traps this time around. I will take that gold. That club. Another club. Uh, um, a choco is just a uh, type of food. Almost tasteless green vegetable which grows on a vine. I ought not to admit naming a vegetable which, which Mr. Yates put on our table. <laughs> Very nice. Um, I'm gonna eat it now because I can't eat non-permanent food as a as a spriggan anyway. Might as well. It's bland. Um, that F is a toadstool. It happens to grow on on, on corpses uh, for a while while they rot. There we go, another stab. Staircase out of the dungeon. 
Dang it. Okay. Magic restored. Okay. Now we're done exploring. I think we...